Okay, good evening. It is Wednesday, May 21st. You're watching the Virgin Port with Mike Thomas down here at the uh, downtown, down here, down here at the downtown Windsor Business Center. It's 720 Olet, live stream by Nokstrom Digital Media through XDs TV. Uh, tonight on the Converge Report, it's going to be, of course, and, you know, so it's going to be brief. I'm going to waste all my time with it. It's going to be where's Rob Ford or where's Robbo? <laughs> Do our, our latest update. You know what? And the Twitter the Twitter reports keep on coming in. Uh, cybersecurity. Okay, there's a little little bit of happening at eBay, and it just makes you wonder. Just makes you wonder. You want know, to keep telling you how safe and secure everything is in the internet. Everything is in the cyber world. But I guess you know what? What do you see my slides? Okay, and today. Okay, they will be introducing uh, Justin uh, Prince with he's going to talk about what's happened. Like he's, like, he's talking about uh, bike, you know, we call it bike safety. He's going to talk a little bit about bike safety uh, in Windsor, Essex, or you know, more or less how dangerous is bike safety is in Windsor, Essex. And we're looking forward to that. Uh, okay, and I always start off, okay, Knoxville Digital Media. Okay, like us on Facebook. Okay, take, take a look at it. You know, I'm going to show a slide later on. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, we do do this live stream through XDs TV. Okay, then it pops over to YouTube. Thank you for watching live. And then it's going to go over to YouTube and, you know, give us the views. We're over 25,000. We're, we're, we're making the mark and we're getting there. So, you know what? This is what it's all about. The best local programming in Windsor, Essex. And, of course, I kind of do what you know, I call it Facebook karma. I call it, you know, the Facebook thought police as they are kind of almost controlling what's going on as far as what you what you're seeing in the news between Facebook and Twitter. And it is really, truly I saw that because people put up whatever they need to put up and it goes fast and the news is fast. And that's why it is Facebook karma. OK, and the first part and the first part we're going to talk about is, uh, of course, is where's Robbo? <laughs> Where's Rob Ford? And he was located, I guess, you know, it's Canadian-style rehab. Uh, it's not where you're locked down at the Betty Ford or locked down at Chicago. We tried to get into the Chicago rehab. And, uh, and even some of the, 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 the other ones, like uh, I think it was Homewood, they thought he was going to be in the Guelph area. And they were searching for him all over the place. And then he kind of, uh, he kind of pops up out of nowhere out in Bracebridge, Ontario. And that's when they then they got clips of him going to the bank and clips of him, you know. I I, I guess the Brace, Brace Bridge must also vote in the uh, Toronto, uh, <laughs> in the Toronto area. But he was out there campaigning big time, and it was almost kind of again disturbing to see somebody that's supposedly be in rehab. But that's what his story is, and with Doug Doug uh, uh, Doug Ford getting all teary eyed on the news in regards to his brother, and here he is bouncing around. They're saying, oh, you know, there was supervised visit, and it was this, and it was that. And you just kind of go, okay, whatever, rehab, yes, yeah, sure, Rob Ford. And if people keep on believing that's what he's doing, and you you know what, you, you, you've drink, I call it, it's drinking the Kool-Aid. You've, you've had a big cup of it, and let's see what happens this fall with the election. And, and here we go. So he's supposed to be in Bracebridge. And then just a report out, again, Twitter from Globe and Mail just a few minutes ago. And here it was. It sounds like his, his vehicle has been impounded in Muskoka, of all places. And, and I guess if, if the early indications that some women, some woman was arrested with his vehicle. So I guess we'll just kind of, where's Robbo now? Is he in Bracebridge? Is he in Mus Muskoka? Or is he back in Toronto or still trying to get in Chicago? I guess we'll wait and see. Um, this was kind of a bigger story. You know, we're kind of looking at the trends of what's happening out there. And, uh, and, you know, we are not alone. You're not alone to be the only person that gets hacked. Okay. eBay has now been hacked. And as regarding, they say, you know what, it urges all members to change their passwords immediately. That seems to be the theme. Uh, when Yahoo and emails were hacked and Twitter was hacked, uh, as we'll put up the next slide there, look at all the different places that are so secure in the cyber world. The story after story in regards to it. And eBay had to come out Wednesday morning and say, it's been hacked and this is what you need to do. Uh, we think, you know, we stopped it at all the, <coughs> uh, the intrinsic levels. It's really only your passwords you have to be worried about. And again, it's the same thing. Is it really truly just your passwords? Is it really just like what kind of uh, security issues you're going to have going down the road? I can tell you from a personal story uh, in regards to Target being the Target being hacked. We were actually shopping over, you know, when people come to, across the across the border shopping. Myself and my wife were actually shopping over at Target, and for some reason, just kind of pulled out the Canadian credit card. Uh, just for no particular reason, 10 bucks, and we actually got caught up in that hack thing, and we were told not to worry about it, no big deal, and sure enough, we received a phone call yesterday uh, from that particular credit card company saying, you know what, cut them up, okay, it's been compromised, and you know what, we, everybody, we're calling everybody up one by one to let them know that, yeah, we didn't think it was a big deal, but you know what, yes, you were included in that hack. So here you go, look at the screen beside me here. And you got Microsoft, I go TD Bank, America's most famous, America's most convenient hacked bank, okay? 
Uh, let's see now, Twitter, you got Yahoo, you got your credit card companies calling everybody, and of course, the government, you know, right during tax time, that was no joke, they actually extended, uh, uh, extended the tax deadline by five days because of the heart believe hack, and you know, you just kind of say, okay, is it, how safe really is it in cyber world? Uh, when you know what, you're, whenever they're trying to turn you over everything to electronic, this debate happens in circles of people. Say, for example, in regards to a state. Say, for example, when you're paying your bills, and they're saying, you know what, they're charging you two bucks every time that you want to have a paper bill. They say you don't need it. What do you mean I don't need it? I need it to be able to track, track what my banking is, track what my credit card payments are, because at the end, if you really look at what's behind me here, uh, do you really track that everything should just be locked into cyber world? and that you know there's no access it's so safe and secure i'm saying i don't believe is as safe and secure as what everybody is saying that it is and that is again the opinion of mike thomas and the converge report and really what the issue is i'm getting tired of being charged two bucks for every piece of paper that's mailed to me but i guess that's a whole nother issue we'll be taking that one on um and of course, you know, I keep kind of dancing into the election here. We're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, there's a lot of things going on in regards to where they are. And I'm talking more of the Windsor locally. And we have what we had was we had Premier Win in. Uh, look, I'll, I'll bounce to that one first. Premier Win was down in Windsor yesterday. Uh, she was campaigning at uh, Theresa Perusa's campaign headquarters and helping her out and you know talking about all the great work that she's done especially you know what in regards to the thoracic uh keep the thoracic cancer surgeries in the windsor area um, and some of the more significant people i have just kind of pointed out you had a uh, uniform former or retired uniform caw uniform president ken lawenza was there in support of Teresa Perusa? Okay, in regards to Unifor's recent you know, decision to, uh, we'll do strategic voting uh, back and forth, or depending upon the riding, depending upon the location. And actually, one photo I saw in the background there, John Strasser uh, from St. Clair College. Uh, uh, St. Clair College was there. The I guess the dean of St. Clair College, uh, or president of St. Clair College, was there, also in attendance. So she got some major players out there with with Kathleen Wynn. and Kathleen Wynn, again espousing uh, the importance. And I know Eddie Francis would have liked this, or whoever the next new mayor is going to be is going to like it. Espousing again the importance of manufacturing and the auto industry in the Windsor area. And yes, it's still important to the Windsor area. There's no doubt. We're talking about Chrysler's now because I just point out at the end, General Motors is gone and Ford's is greatly reduced. So. Let's get on that. Keep manufacturing. Is that truly what gives Windsor a good edge and good middle class incomes and good paying and or good well good paying jobs and good supporter jobs? Then you know what? Maybe that is we we can work. We can talk about diversification all we want, but auto is still a major player in this particular area. Um, and of course, what's happening on Saturday or this coming Saturday will be we'll have the next leader come down. It'll be Andrea Horvath. Uh, she's going to come down and, and hang out with uh, Taraz Natashak, Percy Hatfield, and also uh, with uh, Lisa Gretzky. Is going to be where it's going to be at the Komodo Club, May 24th, 10 a.m. on Parent Avenue. Uh, and this was put out by Lisa Gretzky herself. She is the candidate for Windsor West for the NDP. So it seems to be as we're going, as we're going, as we're really watching some of the races in the Windsor area. That seems to be a very, very hotly contested one. And they're saying, can Teresa Perusa? Uh, way out or or run or run away not run away from but stay ahead of the liberal scandals or really is that the voters want a clean slate and that seems to really there's going to be that seems to be what's going to be as far as that writing goes and is looking at you know Taraz uh, Taraz Natashak being you know pretty you know doing a very very good job out in Windsor or, or out in the Essex riding and of course Percy Hatfield uh, really watching Windsor and the Windsor Tecumseh riding so and really kind of taking care of business there so it's going to be really really I think the one to watch what they're saying for is going to be Teresa Perusa versus uh, Lisa, Lisa Gretzky and the, you know not trying to discount the PC guy totally right out but I think they're just running candidates to make sure they have candidates in the election uh, so that's kind of where we're at um, and and of course we have Tim Hudak and you kind of wonder where uh, Tim Hudak and when he's going to come back to or will him and Jeff Watson make the tour uh, the tour of Windsor Essex that'd be something interesting um, especially with the recent um, I should be laughing but anyways it's just politics uh, with the recent Alpha L campaign that was in Windsor talking about anything must stop Hudak anything but Hudak so we'll see whether or not he actually brings his bus down here or kind of slides into town and slides back out as far as as it goes for Mr. Mr. Hudak and let's see what he does um 
And you know what? As far as, again, I try to watch it because I call it social media. I call it, my news is all about social media because I think they're popping up. And here we have the Green Party. And we're going to do a link to that a little bit later on. But uh, Green Party's Mike Schreiner. And it was on Twitter. And he says it now. They had a great big picture on, uh, on the agenda's uh, t uh, Twitter site there that he'll be ruffling some feathers. So make sure you tune into the agenda with Steve Pakin tonight and listen to uh, Mike Schreiner. He's given everybody their opportunity to all the leaders that get their opportunity to come on the agenda and talk about politics. Most of his shows, or almost all of his shows, have been dealing with the elections going forward. He had one on health care the other day and had all four candidates, or candidates from all four parties, talking about health care, talking about the selling of plasma, talking about some of the ideas and ideals and strategies of the companies. And, you know, and he hits them hard. And he asked the questions. So if you really want to keep in tune to what's happening in the election, the agenda with Steve Pakin, to me, is, anyway, is, is good, informative election news. News. Okay, so that kind of gets us to there. And I kind of always look at different things that are happening in the election, different things that are, are that are different from what I've seen before, anyways. So this was put out by the NDP as you know, we're really starting to get the attack ads going. And I kind of look at it to being, you know what, is this truly, to me, is this truly the sign of the apocalypse as far as Ontario election goes? Um, Gee whiz, the sun has never been really someone to kind of take a look at and say that they are um, supporting the NDP. Uh, I, I, I'm almost like, I'm like, I have a loss of words for a minute to say that the sun has actually put this on the cover and the NDP jumped all over it. And, and they're saying, you know what, if they're going all out against the conservatives, you know, the NDP is going all out against the conservatives. And why? And it was quite put, quite, quite succinctly was put in the memo that they sent out because Ontario's need to know that Tim Hudak has no idea how to run a lemonade stand, let alone a whole government. And I thought that was pretty, pretty, pretty cool, pretty interesting, especially when it all begins with the nonsense that the Sun has put out and, and, and who they're supporting for this election. And it says conservatives just doesn't make sense. And that goes back to uh, Mike Harris and his common sense policy and that in really and truly that uh, it says help Andy Hoover bring change that makes sense for Ontario. So, and again, it's just begun. And I had, I said, the blackout or the blackout is over as far as the attack ads go. So we, you know, we can start looking forward to that. Will it kind of change what's happening? Will it change the polls? Well, are people like kind of in tune to this social media type of election this time around? And will they embrace it? Okay, will they like it? Will they do the laugh? And will they get a vote at the end of the day? I guess that's what we're going to have to wait and see. Um, and I was kind of put up there as far as all the different things that are going on. And I suppose, hey, we don't talk about bobbleheads. Okay, we already talked about Rob Ford. They call him the Mayor Ford as far as the bobblehead slide goes. And we got bobblehead Doug Ford uh, making unbelievable statements in regards to group homes uh, being based in communities. And you know what? Unless you have a plan, you shouldn't talk about how horrible things are and how rotten things are and how they destroy communities. And we're going to be definitely in a convergence report looking at addressing that issue uh, uh, of what Doug Ford's name is in the very near future. Is, you know what? They need to know. They really need to know. People need to know and pay attention that, you know, if it doesn't affect you today, it will affect you somewhere down the road. So you keep electing people like this. We keep considering people like this. Okay, little Stephen, Teak and Tim, and the Fords. Okay, Ontario will continue to be the type of uh, country and community that we're going to grow. We're just going to grow to hate. I'm going to tell you, you're not going to like living here by the time it's the end of the day. Um... And that's going to bring us up to it. We're going to bring it up to it, and you know, we're going to be back in a minute. And But I'm glad to present today. It's going to be Justin Prince is going to jump into the show, jumped in with Knox from Digital Media and XEST, XEST TV. Uh, he's here from St. Clair College, and he's going to tell you, uh, and I know there's, you know there's quite a bit. There's quite a bit in regards to the bikers or, the, or, the, or cyclists, okay, trying to find safe places to ride in Windsor, Essex. And when we come back, Justin is going to tell you all about that. You're watching Assist TV, streaming live from downtown Windsor, from the Windsor downtown business radio. This is Convergence Report with Mike Thomas. We'll be right back.
And we're back here with the Convergence Report. As Mike Thomas just said, I'm Justin Prince. Now, I'd like to thank Mike Thomas for allowing me to be on the show tonight. Now, first of all, the part we're talking about right here is something called Bike Rant because bike safety is one of the most important things that are starting to pop up in the area, especially with people wanting more bike routes, people wanting more bike lanes in the city of Windsor as well as in the surrounding Essex County. Now, I'm going to explain an in-person situation to start off. I'm going to make it as fast as I can, but on May 14th, which was a week ago from this broadcast, it was my day off here from Knox from Digital Media. And if you remember, it was a pretty decent day. It was sunny some parts, but raining in the other parts. Now, as you go through the day, you know, staying home most of the day, you get hungry. And when you get hungry, you have to have something that you usually have all the time, like a sandwich or soup or something out of the freezer or something. Well, you kind of get bored of that once in a while. So I decided, what the heck, may as well go somewhere different to Subway. Now the subway, there's two subways in Tecumseh where I live. There is one at Tecumseh and Manning and the other one at Tecumseh and Banwell, which is with this situation. Now with this situation, I had never rode the bike past the home hardware at L'Esperance and EC Rail Expressway before then. Before then, it was just a convenience store, or maybe just to get a bottle of Coke or something. So, I usually, I set up the GPS, everything's all set, it's about a 20 minute bike ride, I think, no problem. So I go down the usual road. You know, have a usual way where you have to take Westlake, I think it's Westlake Boulevard, to get out of the area. And once you get out of that said area, you have to go down Lesperance to get to the main part of the town. Now this was around 3, 34 o'clock. If you're in the area of Tecumseh, you know it is rush hour every single time you're in that area, which means you have cars backed up three blocks down on Tecumseh, near Lesperance and Tecumseh, backed up on the EC row, everything's backed up. Not a good time to ride the bike when you think about it. But, cross the Lesperance, and you usually need some space to at least start pedaling the bike. Because you can't ride on the sidewalks in Tecumseh or in Windsor for that matter. You can't just ride on the sidewalk, expect ped pedestrians to move around. The according to the bylaws for Windsor and Tecumseh, you have to ride on the street or in a bike lane. So, that's where the issue is. You have cars speeding by trying to get to home, back to their houses, back to work, something along those lines to your left. You're trying to get on, going on the right where there's a bike curve and there's not even a bike lane because I'll get more to that later. But as soon as it got to the EC Row Expressway, you have to walk across and if you don't want to get hit by a car somewhere. Usually, most of the time, the cars allow you to just walk across, no problem. For the first time, it was beep beep, car behind the person letting me go, honks. So, that means, is it because of the bike or is it because they're in a hurry? So, you can't really discuss that, but once you get a, once I got across the EC row, there was a bike lane to start off. You see about a foot and a half wide, maybe two feet wide is a bike lane. But as you, I continue to go down that lane, it starts to shrink more and more and more until there's no lane. You have basically the curb of the street to ride on. That's about it. Unless you want to get hit by a bike, by a car, you can't go anywhere past that curb because you have cars who want to dominate the road and who want to have as much space as possible. They don't really want to move over a foot because you're in that said foot. So it was a matter of stopping and starting because, of course, you don't want to get hit by a car when you veer over. Sometimes... It's an act. Sometimes I hit the curb. Sometimes I almost flipped over because I had to try and stop while using my foot, like my right foot here, in the door to make sure I didn't flip into the street and get hit by a, by a car or a truck or something. So this continued all the way down to Banwell and Tecumseh Road. At Banwell and Tecumseh Road, that is about a long ride, if you can think about it. So a lot of issues happen on Tecumseh Road because you have Gilligan's, you have a law office, you have all these businesses and traffic lights. And usually you have cars parked, you have red lights every few minutes. So it was a matter of stopping and starting to make sure, oh hey, I don't want to get hit by a car. And yes, that is somebody playing around in the back room or something. But it's a matter of you have to focus and try not to get hit by a car. You get what I'm trying to say. 
But by the last time, you know where Metro is near Banwell and Tecumseh. It is a grocery store if you don't know. But I was almost ran off the road. Had a car almost hit me with my, their mirror on my left side. Hit the curb on the right. Almost did, hit, went head over heels trying to stop with the dirt. Bringing up dirt off the ground so I wouldn't get hit by, by a car. Had to get off the road as soon as possible because if I didn't, someone was going to smash into the right the back tire and then blame it on me for riding the bike instead of the car. So, show the next picture on the slideshow, Alex. Alex is our main technical producer and the main person for Knoxrum. So I'm not sure if the bike picture is showing up on the screen just yes. yet. It is? It is. But okay. Anyway, once you see this, this is one of the pictures that are just to my right right now. You can tell there is, this is one of the few pictures I took. I took about two. I wish I should. I should have took more, but I didn't feel like taking pictures of my pants covered in mud, and that is one of the shots. So we skip ahead now. Ride. I had to call for a ride home because if you do that, you don't want to get hit by a car on the way back. Skip ahead to last Saturday. The back brake line was cut from that said bike ride from either putting it in the car or that last hitting the curb, ripping the back brake line before I could even notice. So, overall, it was a pretty nasty ride. Overall, I'm going to wrap this up. There are a couple things that have to be brought up. First things first. One of the main things we have to focus on and one of the main things that I know the city of Windsor is focusing on is to increase the number of bike lanes and bike routes because situations like I just mentioned is one main issue. And you can't have that when you can't have every single person driving a car on the street. Now there are two events that will be popping up onto the left side of me right now on your screen. One of them will be something called Bike Safe. Bike Safe is held in Kingsville usually on a daily basis from April 26th to June 23rd. It is on Mondays and Saturdays. Mondays it is 4 p.m. to 6, Saturdays 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Those are for fun activities as well as group rides and safety activities. Once again, that is held in Kingsville, and that goes until June 23rd. Second season starts off on August 4th until September 27th, and that is at 23 Mill Street West in Kingsville. Now, the other event that's also up on the left side of me on your screen is the Bike Safety Rodeo. Now, this is held at the Salvation Army in Leamington. You don't know where that is, then it's 88 Severington Street. So, that is held on Saturday, May 31st, so in a week or two from now, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., followed by a free barbecue. That, you get to have bike safety checks, health info, a bike rodeo. I'd like to see what that is. Hopefully, it's not like the bull rodeos, but it's with a bike, so... And then guided rides as well as helmet fittings. Also, they are giving away free helmets as well. Helmets are mandatory because even though the bylaws say you can be 19 or older without a helmet, you have to wear a helmet for this event. So thank you very much for allowing me on to this part, Mike. I'll let you take over the show once again because we are down to the final 10 minutes. Back to you, Mike. And are we going to break? Yep, yep we are going to break. You're watching The Convergence Report with Mike Thomas here on XE's TV. We'll be right back in just a minute. And we're back. We're back. Thank you, Justin. You know what? That was an excellent rant. A little bit of report on the Windsor you know, issues in Windsor, Essex. Uh, you know, I can we can say we're getting better. Uh, I know that they're going to great lengths. They still get a bit of a battle. They, you know, they, it, it's very costly to create the room. A to lose a lane in some cases, as people don't want to lose that lane. Uh, they don't want to lose that room. The vehicle doesn't want to lose that room. And you know, what, one of the big issues is the trucks. They need that room, and some still cheat and go down streets they're not supposed to go down. Uh, so it becomes a major, major issue. Each municipality is taking a look at it. I was just listening to a uh, small, uh, I'm going to say listening to, I was listening to a news bit, and it actually came out of Florida, 
and they're talking about that what's the challenges that many of the communities are facing is they were all designed at a certain kind of point in time anything that was new anything where they were adding new roads it was an auto type of world we transitioned away from bikes as a set as a form of travel really and truly it was all cars so now these communities including one like Windsor which is an auto community trying to transition to trying to transition to a biking a cyclist community and, and and blend with the autos I'm telling you they're having a tough time and they're trying to get caught up but they're definitely having a tough time um, okay so back to the show so what we're having here and I kind of I say I kind of pull things up I kind of look for what I can find and what I saw was it was a huge beef recall um, this was put out by the Windsor Business Networks, and yes, it was Wolverine Packaging Company. And the, we, you, the reason we kind of, you know, we report on this a little bit. We're a border town, and it really is a Detroit-based meat producer. 1.8 million pounds of ground beef, uh, ground beef is being recalled after U.S. Department of Agriculture and Safety inspection revealed the product may be contaminated with that very, very dangerous E. coli bacteria, uh, and was sent to distributors in Massachusetts, Michigan. Uh, Missouri and Ohio for use in the restaurant so here we go with like being so close to Michigan and you know a lot of traveling happening in the summertime we got we want to be safe we want to be good uh, really good uh, you can get there's like you can get a, a, a like a, a list of recalls even for the businesses might be purchasing those ones in and you can get it from the uh, uh, website www.fsis I don't have it up on the screen uh, E. coli uh, can give you severe cramps, nausea, diarrhea, as well as complications, and it can spread from person to person. So uh, they definitely uh, want everybody to be well aware of this and hope that they can get that meat back off the shelves as quickly as possible. And and that would be, uh, of course, you know, again, it's just one of those dangerous types of things that happen. Even if, even with all the standards they're trying to set in North America, we still think we're better off than most, and we still have problems with our food. And I, you know, I kind of followed. I said I kind of followed it on Facebook, and it was kind of, kind of neat. But we definitely had Stacy C uh, make. I actually, 720 people like this uh, put up on the Windsor Business Network, so it was very, very good for them to do that for everybody. And of course, there was over 10,000 shares. So definitely trying to use Facebook again, the medium, the social media medium that we use to get our message out as quickly as possible. But I like what Stacy C had to say, and she said that's a lots of cows that lost their lives for no reason. So there is no doubt. 1.8 million pounds of beef caused the was a definitely waste of of the uh, of, of the cows or as the uh, anyways that's I, I thought that was kind of cute and they're kind of you know bantering back and forth what happens and one guy Jacob S said you know, he didn't care he didn't care at all because you know what it was all about he eats deer he eats deer meat so he's not worried about the cows so of course and anyways that kind of happened today. Um, and still going forward and finishing off the show, we want to let everybody know we have something coming up tomorrow, uh, May 22nd, right here at the downtown Windsor a Business Accelerator. Um, it's a big, uh, it's called a knot, it's a, you're invited to our knot tying ceremony and campaign kickoff. And it's going to have, again, here we go, as far as elections go, she would have been here either way, but Teresa Perusa, Liberal candidate for Windsor West, Tom Bain, warden of Essex County and the mayor of Lakeshore, and of course, We Tech Alliance. And they have a key attraction and retention announcement regarding the young talent in the Windsor Essex community. It's at 10 a.m. right here at the Downtown Windsor Business Accelerator. Uh, volunteers will be on site to direct you to help with you the parking. There are some places to park, so there is parking availability. So please come down here. And it's called. And if, if you want more information, it's info at notwe.com. Okay, and again, your participants really appreciate it. If you're worried about your children and you're worried about the youth in the Windsor Essex community finding a place to land, we want them to land here. We want them to stay here, and they're trying to develop that. And they have some great, excellent opportunities. It's only 10 to 11 o'clock, so please stop in and, 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 and pop in and learn more about why not we as far as keeping the youth in Windsor Essex. Um, and again, I, and, I, and I do point it out. But you know what? Subscribe, subscribe. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, here I got I got the, the site up there. www.youtube.com. slash user slash Nockstrom. Oh, I got to fix the Nockstrom. And should be down there. Nockstrom dot one or or Nockstrom one. So please go to Nockstrom. Go to Nockstrom one on the YouTube site. Watch our shows. Give us the views. Okay. And we, you know, we got some good entertaining subjects uh, that are up there. Even some of the past ones. Again, thank you for watching live. But we definitely want you to continue that going on. And I keep doing my teaser. I'm going to do teasers all the time. I will do a story, Eddie Francis, down the road. But they're telling me that this is it. This is the end of the Convergence Report this week. I am Mike Thomas. Thanks for tuning in on Xyz TV through Noxstrom Digital Media live stream down here at the downtown Windsor Business Accelerator. Again, good night, and I shall see you.
next week.